Hello folks, and this is Kiki. Uh, warning again, my mic is still the old one, so my audio quality may be fail, and there's nothing I can do about it. So, if you are a viewer, yes, I know the mic sucks. You're just going to have to deal with it unless you want to donate to a new one, which I would happily accept. Um, anyway... Wow, already off a bad camera angle start. Oh, and then, oh, I missed him. I darn it. Oh well. Yeah, every once in a while you have a must pan Mustang you have to shoot down or something, and looks like I missed that one. Oh well. Uh, yeah, this mission is called Sub Hunt. Huh? I wonder what that means. Well. At least for now, it looks like we're at least not doing the other sub hunt. I've actually had a couple of people comment about how they hated sub the sub hunt section in the uh, Army Man Air Land and Sea and Army Man uh, Team Assault versions uh, when it was a new gimmick. Uh, I myself um, found it. Um, like I said, I, f I find the Team Assault version a lot better than I do the uh, than I did the Final Assault version or the uh, I, I don't remember about the other if there was another version other than Team Assault and uh, the f final one, Lock and Load. Oh, and it looks like we picked up a bazooka, and it actually looks like a decent weapon. Oh my lord, I actually give you a decent weapon. Well, wow, that's scary. Um, yes, folks, I apologize for this video's length. But, uh, see, this bazooka here is what the name of the mission is. Subhunt. This mission expects you to survive all the way to the end without dying once using a bazooka. <laughs> yeah, uh, what that means is, uh, yes, there will be safe state use. However, I'm actually surprised that it wasn't until the very, very end when I needed it. So, uh, there actually is no safe state of use until the very end, and it'll be for a quite, quite apparent and obvious reason. Uh, but as you can see here, the bazooka actually works a lot better than your rifle, and uh, you can actually hit people with it. And there's a jeep. Now, in typical army man fashion, all you have to do is just machine gun the darn thing and be destroyed. But no, uh, unfortunately, due to this game's mechanics, might as well just grenade the darn thing and not worry about it. Okay, now we have the two new mechanics out of the road. Uh, There's some stuff that I want to reiterate from last video. Uh, one, like I said, uh, this game would have been good if it would have had the first person perspective. Uh, I'm going to say that over and over again. Uh, and I know that's part of the game. Game's designed to be more arcade like, but it honestly would have been a thousand times better if they would have stuck to the standard that they had set in Army Man 3D, Sarge's Heroes, and all them. That would have been perfect. Uh, I can't blame them for wanting to try a railgun style. Uh, that's nothing, you know, like I said, you're, you're always going to have that one test game that totally fails, but uh, you're going to try it anyway just to see if people would have a market in it. Uh, so I don't blame 3DO in that. Uh, I just kind of, this is one of those, you really obviously can tell that nobody play tested this because there is a lot of things that they expect you to do that unless you actually either played level once and died and learned that spot through trial and error, uh, or you just get get lucky, and that they shoot at you to where you can see that, oh, there's an enemy there, which you'll be seeing quite a lot of in this mission. Uh, 
it, it pretty much is very, very badly, badly programmed as far as that goes. Now, as far as level design and enemy placement goes, I am perfectly satisfied with that. It's just that darn fixed camera. That's all that killed this game, and I really wish they would have spent at least a little bit of time playtesting it before they shielded it out. I know this game was made during the whole uh, Army Man, uh, Sarge's Heroes uh, spam and gimmick, and that's actually what the intro was about, was this guy is supposed to be the fusion of all five of the Bra Bravo company, but uh, it just really, if they had just spent, a, it, rather than just chill it out if they would have took a little bit of time and play tested it and like I said this is during the time of EA uh, I think that this actually is one of the EA games but this is where EA always fails as a developing company is they just go for that insta buck rather than that than taking the time to take a to make a quality game and this is what it, this is what shows it's really bad as an EA game now, why do I bring up EA so much in this video? Well, they're also the type of people who do Mass Effect 3. Um, I recommend you guys watch uh, WTF Mass Effect 3, uh, done by Total Halibut, uh, slash Total Biscuit, and uh, you'll understand why I'm ranting. Uh, why do game developers want to make so much out of a useless background? Uh, that's been one of the main, 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 main things of what divides the older generation with the newer generation. The older generation actually wants a game that plays. Like, uh, I mean, we had Ninja Gaiden that, <laughs> that just had butt hurt, uh, challenge and difficulty and gimmicks and total nonsense versus nowadays everything is all movie movie based and uh, you know more more inclined to be play like a movie rather than play like a game um and that's not to knock mass effects 3's uh creativity uh I mean, I've heard qu quite a bit of hype that it actually has a decent storyline and that sort of thing, and that's not too bad. I, I can't, I can't gripe with that there. But what I can gripe about, uh, like I said, watch his video, and then don't don't pay attention fully to what uh, Tull Hubbard says the first time you watch it. Watch the video the first time and look at all the useless background, all the all the content that's going on all along the background that you can't interact with that really is unnecessary what do I mean here um, if you've ever played a first-person shooter MMO uh, you'll, you'll know a per you, you can already have like at least four or five that came to mind. First thing I said is but like Battlefield Two, Battlefield Three, uh, you know, like like those type games. America's Army. Uh, oh, I can't. Quite a bit of them. Uh, but basically, they're all arena styled uh, MMOs. Basically, all they are is you fight in a condensed space where the maps are entirely the same and everybody knows the camp fast locations. Like you notice, uh, Estigo also had a lot of pre-designed maps for the, where everything is in a particular spot. Really stinks for a first person shooter. Really stinks. Um, that it... I would love to see game gaming companies do like a Corner Drat did uh, and do like supply line based MMOs. Uh, I I have to say that by far, like I said, I'm I'm gonna pump it up forward. Uh, 
Battleground Europe still has to be the best World War II MMO if you actually want a World War II MMO. Uh, world of Tanks and World of Ships and World of Planes. That's fine if you're just into just, again, arena-based combat. Versus Battleground Europe, it's more you actually play the game. You're, you're actually living history. You're invading France. You're not... You're not going from one spawn point to capture another, or plant the bomb at some other spawn point or some location that everybody knows where to go. Uh, that one's more you capture control points and you cut off supply lines and you uh, move supply flags and uh, you you can sail ships for six hours plus at a time sailing from from uh, Norwich to to Den Haag or whatever, it, it doesn't matter. You you have the freedom to do it in actual game time. That's now that is actual background. I that is useful background and stuff where people, you know, that that's actual good content versus okay Mass Effect three. Ooh, we, we we can spend an extra twenty bucks on an already overpriced game, seeing backgrounds that we can't. They're only there for one level, and then once we've beaten it, uh, what was that about again? You know that that, that sort of effect. Uh, this game kind of suffers from it too. Like if you've been paying attention from the backgrounds and stuff. Actually, if you would have watched my last video and watched this video, you would have seen at least three repeats of the same uh, level situation. Um, so, I mean, I, I granted that, you know, this is their limited limitivities, and, and like I said, this one is like later date PS1 uh, where like it was just before they started heading into the PS2 age so I mean they can get away with it here but like nowadays for that Mass Effect 3 like really you guys couldn't design a, an actual war simulation MMO are, are you kidding me yeah, sure, capture the flag, capture the marker, capture the control point. Is it all good and stuff, but really, no. I mean, Battlefield 2 was alright when I played it for a while. Some of the maps were pretty pretty decent sized, but even then, it was everybody knew where to go. It, it, there's just no... it. It was just the same do 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 do, and you win every time. And that's really a bad direction. Uh, I mean, yes, it's it's cool that you're you know you have like, well, we have a exact same MMO style but with different weapons style system. Like we have Battlefield 2 1942 edition with World War II stuff, and you have Call of Duty uh, World at War, and you've got it's basically kind of the similar thing, and then you have uh, like Black Ops and stuff. They're all capture supply line, team objective based. It just. People either focus too much on the squad level. Or they focus too much on the uh, general area. They, they don't focus in between there, and that that's kind of another reason why I'm harping. It's, I mean, uh, and then you have copyright nonsense. So, and, and here's the question: um, the way the music industry now is. If you had a weapon called Bazooka, how many how many royalties do you have to pay because some other game copyrighted the name Bazooka? <laughs> you know what I mean? It, 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 um, I was reading one article where uh, a company will sue you for singing Happy Birthday to you a certain way 
because they have it licensed a certain way, so you have to come up with a different version, or you have to pay them royalties. And I'm like, what in the heck is this? And then I was reading stuff where you can't record if you're singing songs in your wedding or karaoke or except you, you can't even record doing, uh, having little Girl Scouts uh, doing their first uh, cookie sale. You can't do that if it was like in a mall or something. Nope, can't do that. Or a church. You, no, you can't do that. There, you can't even have a church singing a uh, non-for-profit just trying to get money to support itself. Uh, singing songs. Uh, I mean, and that's an actual Supreme Court case, if you can believe that. Which is rather depressing. So, yeah, and like I said, I, I apologize for harping so much on EA, but EA is one of the big pushers for SOPA, and like I said, EA it just has this notorious reputation. And then you have, like, uh, the trade wars during uh, Nintendo during the 80s and 90s between Japan and North America, where uh, games wouldn't be imported or exported to each other. Then you had the Nintendo seal of approval, because people would uh, create indie games off their software. Like, uh, nowadays, like, any company could develop software for a particular system, to some extent. Versus, uh, back then, you had to actually submit it to Nintendo and have a Nintendo seal of approval if you wanted to market your game. Or you'd have to just, you know, pirate it somewhere and hope, hope somebody buys it. Or you, like I said, or because of trade wars, you wouldn't be able to get access to a game at all, period. Uh, which, like, again, when I bring up about MMOs and stuff, uh, that's kind of a big issue for me because I'm an MMO player. I mean, I'm not a World of War crack nut, but uh, there are, but I do kind of hanker some style of MMOs, and I really get irritated that uh, I see all these MMOs that like I'm hyped for, that I'm interested in, and I see, oh, IP block, IP block. Oh, you live in North America? Nope, you're not Asian enough for the North Amer, and you live in North America, so you can't play. Boo hoo hoo! Too bad. Uh, I hate that treatment. I mean, I can understand, yeah, you know, laggy servers or whatever, but what's to stop you from making another server just for North America players? Uh, many people are willing and are happy to translate. Uh, I mean, uh, take Monster Girl Quest, for example. There's an actual translator, a guy who translated part one, and then he was actually hired by the company. Uh, to to do a translation for uh, part two, to do a better translation for him. I mean, there you go. There's business opportunity. There's a way to create more money, have an economy, expand your markets a bit, uh, open up trade. Why can't you do that? You don't need to worry about localization, this team. All you have to do is have fans that are interested enough to enjoy the game and want to translate it and say, hey, you want to translate it? Give them a little bit of pay and go with it, you know? Nothing nothing too bad or too hard. Uh, I mean, shoot, I, I even got a lot of friends who like to read kanji or Japanese for their spare time just to play games that are foreign games that aren't in the American market. Just because of that. So, I mean, there is a market out there, but nobody seems interested. It, it's just all this one little hidden society or something. Or, uh, or just nation biased. And it, uh, really, I, I don't get it. Um, oh, and uh, a bit of personal news. Uh, 
for me anyway. Uh, I had a series of tornadoes and storms hit my area. Uh, luckily, uh, I was able to get through them just fine. But uh, a friend of mine who is an It's War player named who goes by Space, unfortunately, got hit by a tornado. Uh, he's fine. Supposedly, he's fine. He just he lost his home to it and. Uh, it's something for employers or staff out there who might be watching this video or just curious about it. Uh, open, you know, you, you guys really should consider that. Oh, anyway, I, I've that this time I was eating a sandwich and it came back. But yeah, uh, employers really like, like I said, that's there's one thing that I will agree on with Obama. You shouldn't punish people for having a year plus of unemployment uh, really that that's not the person's un being unemployed's fault they are trying to find work quit using that as a punishment give them training if, you know if they're actually volunteering to do the job you know yeah yeah it would be nice and you know everybody wants the top the best and you know uh, best thing in the world type staff but you know what what's wrong with training you know a college student who's just out of college or a high school student who's just out of high school in some basic things uh, to you know why do they have to always either go all white and blue collar why, you know just like barber school why why do they need to have barber school uh, are they afraid of people doing it for cheaper than five dollars and such? I mean, there's no rationale behind it, uh, and that's another thing. Um, again, about EA, why do you need all this elaborate nonsense? And just keep things simple. Uh, same thing with Mass Effect and uh, all the new games like with Naughty Dog and his, with his Drake Adventures and stuff, Uncharted. Uh, honestly, I mean, you don't need high intensive graphics. Yes, they're nice. Yes, I guess they're okay, but you don't need them. Uh, and another thing is... Uh, Yes, I, I, I like uh, told like told how it told biscuit uh, addresses like uh, about how used game stores kind of take advantage of the market. Oh, and here here's an example of you know you have to have known he was there because he's hidden in the bushes. But anyway, uh, yeah, I I can understand you know. But that's why you charged it so much for new in the first place, isn't it? Um, I mean, yeah, I can. Programmers do have a whole lot of work, uh, and you know they are in college and they gotta pay off student loans and stuff. I get that. I get that. But at the same time, like. Why does everything have to be so elaborate? Is it too much to make a simple game? Uh, and another thing, like, why do you need to make Madden blah 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 blah, blah, blah every year? Uh, if you're so much about updating content and stuff, well, there you go. If people are interested in Madden, okay, you can have a patch for that. That's fine. That's good. That's workable content, and then you can patch to get the latest information. Okay, good. You don't need to have Madden 2003, Madden 2004. And there's a shark. There's a shark. Shark boat. That's a shark with a cannon on its head. Okay. <laughs> yeah, take a look at that. That's a shark with a cannon on its head. <laughs> Is that supposed... I, I think that's supposed to be the sub. Yeah, that's the sub. That looks like a shark with a cannon on its head. Yeah, uh, this is why I'm saying there's safe state abuse, but we're at the end of the mission.
Ow, he hurts. But, again, why do you have to be elaborate? <laughs> you know, making a little bit easier to run programs so more people can access it is just as good. Uh, you don't have to have the highest, the greatest, the newest out there. You can you can go you can go down a little bit. Uh, and like I said, with trade wars and stuff, and then now supposedly the UN is trying to take over the internet and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think this is going too far, but it makes just no sense to me why people do this. I mean, let let the market decide what they want to have. It's really ga price gouging and stuff. P people can't afford f the necessities right now, and then you're wanting to have an eighty dollar game that's not even the full game, and which TH uh, elaborates on quite a bit about Mass Effect Three. But that is my biggest biggest grant is game game designers and stuff value their stuff too much. It's kind of like how the pawn shop is. Like if you ever watch Pawn Stars, you know, like you see this like guy who's like, "Oh, I had this item for 30 years, or my grandpa had it," and then you, and then they'll say, uh, "This is a praise that twelve thousand dollars," and then they, you notice that they, eventually they sell it for two thousand dollars. I think the same effect should work on video games too. Unfortunately, they they sh should be realistic in cost. Uh, wages realistic, uh, you know, musicians and singers. You don't need a McMansion. You can live. You can live in a single house. No, sorry. You know, but that's my thoughts on it. And yeah, this shark boat hanging here is really annoying. Its cannon does a AOE. And it fires them in set intervals. Uh, luckily, the grenades work like mines, so you can chuck them in there like like how I'm doing, and they'll work like dust charges. And it does quite a bit of damage. You just have to get watch out for the cannon fire. But anyway, I'm I'm, I'm being enough about ranting, but. Uh, I, I, I'm just really out of a gripe. I just wanted to talk about it. Uh, so later. And like I said, I recommend you watch uh, Toll Halbit's video. Uh, so you understand kind of my rage. Uh, later, though. <laughs>